Hey guys, it's uh, Scott with Tube Tape. Uh, the 4th of July is coming up, so we're going to go ahead and show you guys how to make some fireworks using uh, FX Lab Pro from FX Home. FX Lab Pro has a particle engine, which is great for making fireworks. It's a lot like the uh, particle engine you'd find in something like After Effects, but at a much more affordable cost. FX um, Lab Pro is only like $149. Let's uh, go ahead and get started. The first thing you want to do is open uh, Effects Lab and you'll have a blank canvas. What you want to do is go ahead and take uh, the particle engine and drop that onto the canvas. That's going to go ahead and give you um, a placeholder here. Let's go ahead and kind of center up where we want our firework to begin, um, kind of in the middle of the canvas there. And then basically what we're going to do to create the firework is just change some of the uh, emitter attributes. One thing we want to do is go ahead and lengthen um, the duration of our uh, fireworks. Let's go ahead and just drag this out here a little bit. We can play with it as uh, the firework gets created to just kind of tune it in exactly where we want it. Okay, the thing that you want to do now is go up here and start to change some of these uh, uh, emitter attributes. The first thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and get some textures. These are all included with Effects Lab, so I'll click that. And uh, the ones that seem to work best that a lot of people choose for this type of thing are these photon uh, images. So let's go ahead and grab some of those. The other one that I like is I like to take the uh, sparkle effect. That kind of gives a shimmering look to the uh, firework. But let's go ahead and get those. Okay. And uh, the next thing that we want to go ahead and change here is we want to go ahead and start changing the particle rate. And I'll show you why we're going to do that and the effect that it's going to have. Um, but let's, uh, let's go ahead and change that to about a 25. It doesn't have to be exact. You can play around with it a little bit. Um, and the lifetime of the particles, that's really important for this effect. Let's go ahead and make that a, a 74. Something in that range. You can also play around with the particle lifetime versus the duration of the overall um, effect because uh, they're relative to one another. I'll show you what we mean as we look at this. But you can see right now kind of what our particle's doing. It's sort of spraying things straight up. And that really doesn't look like a firework. So let's go ahead and keep working on it here. Uh, we can go ahead and change the relative to canvas thing a little bit to offset it, but it's really not going to matter that much because what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and change the angle range to be 180, so that means the particles are going to shoot out in all directions. The other thing that I want to do is I want to start uh, the birth of these particles. I, I want it to be much smaller, so I'm going to go ahead and scale it down a little bit. So let me go ahead and bring this down to oh, about a 40-something range. You'll see in a minute the effect that's going to have about a 48. Yeah, there. So it starts out much, uh, much smaller. Um, the next thing we're going to want to do that we should do is go, we're going to go ahead and shut the emitter off in about four or five frames because um, we don't want the particles to keep spewing out. With a firework, they're going to explode and then sort of drift into the atmosphere. So we don't want them to keep coming. So go ahead and we'll set a keyframe here, and I'll turn the emitter off. And we're going to get the, kind of this sort of look which is starting to look a little bit like a firework, except it's a little too symmetrical. Um, we'll go ahead and make a few other adjustments that are going to fix that. Okay. We want to change the color of this too. What we want to do is sort of have it start out one color and then turn into another color. Um, we do that by uh, going here and clicking on the gradient. Um, what I want to do is I want to start with maybe a red and then have it kind of fade to a purple. So let's go ahead and change that. And I'll have it end up kind of at this purple color here. So I kind of go this red. Actually, let's go ahead and make that red maybe a, a blue. There we go. Now we can take a look at this. And we can see that it starts off blue, and then as it kind of fades out, it kind of becomes this purple color, which gives a nice look. But again, it still looks too much like a ring and not so much firework. Uh, so let's go ahead and make a few other uh, minor adjustments here. 
and some of that's going to have to do with the speed randomizer and the size randomizer. So uh, let's go ahead and change the speed randomizer uh, maybe to about one. And like I said, a lot of the stuff's just trial and error, but these are some of the settings that I found that seem to kind of give it that firework-like effect. And I'm going to go ahead and change the randomizer hmm, to about a, I don't know, somewhere in the 60s, something like that. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the effect. As you can see now, the particles are coming out random. That looks much more like a firework, and then it slowly fades off and changes colors. So that's pretty much the uh, basic steps for creating a firework. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you how you can layer some of these things together and also add uh, a rocket effect so it looks like it's shooting into the sky and then bursting. Okay, now we're going to do something a little more interesting with the uh, firework we created. Um, as you can see here, there's a couple things. Now, um, one that I'm showing you is just the firework that we've uh, created in the last um, few minutes. Uh, the other thing is I've added a couple things here, a skyrocket and small firework. I'll show you those in a minute, but let's uh, go ahead and keep looking at the firework we created moments ago. What you can do is you can go ahead and you can copy this firework. So let's just do a control C, control V. Then I'll go ahead and I'll gonna move that below the original firework. Let me rename it so we can see the two different ones. We'll go ahead and just call this Firework Big 2. Okay. Um, then what you can see is we'll go ahead and we're going to offset the second firework a little bit. And you'll get this kind of an effect. You'll see the first firework bursting, and then the second one's bursting inside of it. Um, what you can do then is go ahead and uh, change the color of the uh, second firework to give you a really neat effect. It'll really look like... Uh, some of the fireworks you're going to see on the 4th of July. Let's go ahead and change that a second. Maybe I'll have this one be more of a blue-green type of an effect. So let's do that. I'll go from like a blue. Okay. Set the other side to more of a green. Let over. Now what you get is you get the first firework bursting, which is kind of this red-purple one, and then the blue-green one um, comes in behind that. And you can keep layering those. It's just kind of make it look the way that you want it. The second thing that I did, I'll go ahead and turn on, is I created a smaller firework. Um, this little one here, this little uh, purplish-blue one. And this one actually doesn't have... Um, uh, it's not so symmetrical. All the particles are not falling in the same place. It's actually just kind of bursting up. And to create that effect, what I did was I just changed the um, some of the emitter attributes. Uh, the one that I changed here was the angle range um, because I just wanted to, I don't know, kind of give it a different looking effect and just sort of have it burst up, but not in a, you know, 180 degrees. Anyway, so I've got that one going, along with my original burst. Uh, and then the other thing that I went ahead and added was I added a skyrocket. Um, let me turn that on here real quick. And what that does is it basically looks like the rocket is shooting into the air, and then it bursts here on the, uh, the small purple burst. And to create the skyrocket effect, again, we're going to use the particle engine, and it's all in the... Uh, how you set the emitter attributes. Uh, on this one, I went ahead and used some of the same shapes. What you want for this uh, little ball coming up here is you just want to use um, yeah, a really small particle rate, like four, and have the lifetime set down to one, as you can see where I've done those over here. Uh, what that'll do is it'll just keep this thing as a small, kind of pulsating light. And then I just changed the uh, color randomizer to quickly just sort of go between sort of a purple and a white you can see here and that gives you this effect the other thing that I did was um, I started the particle out a little bit um, larger so it would look like it was flying away from you so if you look here on the scale I set that to uh, about 118 and then you can see where it ends up uh, it's gonna be uh, a little bit smaller here 
uh, 0.76, but it just gives the idea that it's flying away. And the other thing that obviously you're doing is you're animating um, the position of it. So at the beginning, it's actually starting below the frame where you can't see it, and then it comes to the end. And uh, that can be done just by moving that around. But what I'm doing is I'm going ahead and I'm aligning it where the uh, the burst is going to happen. So you want the rocket to fly into the burst so it looks like it's the thing that's exploding. Anyway, let me go ahead and turn all these things on. You can see them all together. And that's basically how it works. It's pretty simple. You can just keep playing around with different colors, shapes, uh, change some of the particle emitter attributes, and uh, you get a lot of neat results.